Welcome. This is what is happening on The Sun today, the 28th of January, 2012. What a week we've had, it seems. But before we get into all of that, a trivia question. In what year was the Antarctic continent discovered? And what was the nationality of the discoverer? In just the last week, we've had 20 C flares, one M flare, an X flare, plus two large proton flares, and at least one small one. And I even found a comet this morning skulking amongst the snow in the proton events. But more on that later. Here are two plots to illustrate the activity of the last week. The top graph is the GOES X-ray plot that you're all familiar with. You can see the M8 flare on the 23rd and the X1.7 flare from yesterday. Below is a plot of the number of protons hitting the Earth as a function of time. We start with a small event on the 20th, which is from the M2 flare from the 19th. The biggest proton event is on the 23rd, starting about an hour after the M8 flare. Even though the X flare is twice as large as the flare on the 23rd, its proton flare was 10 times smaller. Either this flare was a weak accelerator for some reason, or the proton flow was directional, or some combination of the two, of course. We have two officially numbered regions disk at the moment, both in the Northern Hemisphere. 1408 is just west of the Central Meridian, and 1410 is in the Northeast, near the Limb. We do have two as yet unknown regions in the Southeast. None of these regions will give us much activity unless they show substantial growth. So I expect solar activity to remain relatively low for the next few days. If we look at the movie of the last week's worth of activity, you'll see the four region complex near Sun Center is dominated by sunspots from regions 1401 and 1402. Interestingly, although 1401 is at times much larger uh, than 1402, it will produce almost no activity. Most of the flares we have seen have come from region 1402. Next we will look, we will look at the transition region. The part of the solar atmosphere that bridges the relatively cool visible surface of the sun is unbelievably hot corona. While it is tempting for the eye to follow the bright flaring regions, keep an eye on the limbs or for eruptions that may be associated with some of the CMEs that we have seen this week. The low temperature corona is typified by the iron 9 line at 171 angstroms. Note how variable the structures are. What causes such variability? There are two reasons for this. First, heating of magnetic loops. Relatively cool plasma from the photosphere being heated to coronal temperatures at some stage must pass through the 650,000 degree temperature regime of the iron 9 line. And of course the reverse process is true when the heat source of the hot coronal loops ends they must cool down through the same temperature range. Next we have a movie of the active corona at about two and a half million degrees. While you see some variability, these loops are much more cool and lasting than the uh, iron nine lines. Perhaps this is an illusion. One theory states that millions of tiny flares along the length of these loops is what keeps it hot. Of course, there are several theories of coronal heating, none of which have been yet proven. If there were not some continuous energy input to these loops, they would disappear in about 15 minutes. Last we have the flaring corona, seen here in Iron 20 at 10 million. Of course we have our prized X flare from yesterday. See the earlier videos I've done on this. But here is the decay of the event, and as you can see it's still going on. Exquisitely beautiful, isn't it? Speaking of beautiful, we've had some spectacular coronal mass ejections over the last week. Note the snow that you are seeing on some of these images after one of the big flares takes off. This interference is caused by high energy protons accelerated by the flare crashing into the pixels on the detector and saturate them. Thus they appear white in most color tables, i.e. snow-like. The X-ray had a large coronal mass ejection associated with it but it was too far west to strike the Earth, as you can see from this NASA model. The Earth is the little yellow dot to the right at about 3 o'clock. As a result of all this solar activity, the Earth's magnetosphere has been rattled since last week, twice by weak magnetic storms. Those are shown in red in this KP index plot. These were only level 5 storms. The index can go to level 9, but such large events occur very rarely, about once per cycle on average. By the end of the week, things had quieted down, quieted down quite a bit. Did you notice the little comet? No? Well, see. It skirted along the support bar for the occulting disk 
in the Lasco C3 instrument. Judging by its trajectory, it was another one of the Crooks comets. Soho has now seen over 2100 of these. They are fragments of a super comet that broke up when it passed close to the Sun on its last orbit. Note that this comet does not even make it to the occulting disk before it being vaporized. Although this week has seemed active, how with the earlier activity? Here's a plot of the number of flares each day for the last two solar rotations. Green shows C flares, yellow M flares, and red X flares. In terms of just the number of flares, it is similar to the last two weeks. But compared to the same part of the last rotation, activity has fallen off by nearly a factor of two. Next week, the window for my prediction of the next major outburst of solar activity opens. March plus or minus the solar rotation. So over the next few weeks, solar activity should start to increase significantly. Unfortunately, there's no sign of the Southern Hemisphere perking up. If it doesn't do so soon, in the next month, my earlier prediction for an outbreak from there will be proven to have been far too optimistic. So in summary then, the sunspot number has dropped below 40, which is the lowest number for quite some time. The X-ray background is at B4, which is also quite low. The solar wind velocity is at 420 kilometers per second, and the KP index is at 1, which is also considered quiet. So what are we expecting to happen in the next week? First, looking at the GOES SXI instrument, there looks to be some more emission coming over the northeast limb in the next day or so. This is confirmed by the SDO's stereo composite coronal image. But as you can see after that, there'll be several days without anything substantial returning. So unless we suddenly get some new growth, it's going to be a quiet week from a flare point of view. Though I expect to see a few CMEs. The answer to the trivia question? The Antarctic continent was first seen by the Russian Admiral Fabian von Bellingshausen in 1820. Strange to think that we have only known about this vast tract of land for less than 200 years. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of my videos on various subjects, please go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you want to stay abreast of what's happening on the sun, as it heads towards solar maximum, please subscribe. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.